Good morning, and welcome to worship. Uh, my name is Pastor Dennis Hendrickson. I'm the lead pastor here at Christ Lutheran. And, uh, and this morning, we have uh, someone else uh, that you probably are not that familiar with who is assisting and bringing us the sermon. This is Holly Hirschfeld. Uh, she is a seminary student at the Lutheran Theological Seminary in Saskatoon, studying by distance from Regina even before the pandemic made it cool to do that, she said. She and her husband, Marcus, and their three young children moved to Regina from Alberta in the summer of 2018 and have been worshiping with us ever since their arrival in the Queen City, though that, of course, has been interrupted by the pandemic. Uh, her children are some of the participants in the online Christmas pageant this year, providing a most entertaining segment, and I'll let you guess which one that was. When I asked her for a little introduction to herself, she said, I'm not sure what else you'd want to include. I spend a lot of time being told how Minecraft works. We walk into the neighborhood sledding hill at any time it's warm enough. And since the library has a book on crocheting sea animals, I'm learning to crochet a shark. Currently, uh, Holly is taking a homiletics class at the seminary. This is a course that teaches sermon preparation and delivery. And as part of the requirements for her class, Holly has to preach a couple of sermons before the end of the course. So we are glad to welcome Holly into the pulpit today and uh, once again uh, a little later uh, this semester. Besides bringing us the sermon today, uh, Holly is going to be assisting in worship and we thank her for her participation. A few other uh, announcements I'd like to make here at the beginning. Uh, first of all, uh, if you have not picked up your offering envelopes for 2021, uh, we have them in the narthex and the entrance uh, uh, of the church. You'll have to come to the church during office hours. Um, Irene will let you in if you buzz at the, the door, the office door over here, and then come to the, the, the narthex and get your envelopes. And please use the envelopes for 2021. Um, uh, recycle any envelopes you might have left over from 2020 so that we keep our records uh, straight. Pastor Lynn will be doing uh, weekly devotions all throughout the uh, month of January on Wednesdays at 1 p.m. And uh, if you have any questions about that, you can contact Pastor Lynn. And finally, uh, those of you who uh, heard the announcements last week know that I am in the middle of a week of uh, intensive online uh, course, course material for my doctoral program, uh, Doctor of Worship Studies. Uh, what I can tell you is that it's been an interesting journey so far, uh, very uh, exhaustive, um, but also uh, very fulfilling at the same time. So I'm halfway through the intensive class, and then there will be uh, lots of other work that I need to complete following that. So with uh, those announcements uh, out of the way, I'll invite you to take a moment to uh, reflect and prepare for worship as we light the candles here. Uh, if you have candles at home that you light during this time of worship, this would be an appropriate time to do so. Today we celebrate the baptism of our Lord and uh, we begin with a call to worship. Mm -hmm. 
God's strong voice calls us to worship. Call us to sing and offer praise. God's creative voice calls us to worship. Calling us to life and light. God's loving voice calls us to worship. Calling us to love and be loved. Listen for God's voice calls to us now. Spirit of creation and renewal, hover over us gathering this day as you hovered over creation on that first day. Enter into our hearts and our lives as you did at the day of our baptism. Descend on us like a dove as you did on Jesus's day of baptism, that we may hear again your words of love and adoption. Speak from the heavens into our minds that we may perceive your words of guidance and wisdom. Amen. Our opening hymn, God Whose Almighty Word. Please join me in a prayer of confession. When our hearts are hard as stone, soften us with your grace. When our lives are riddled with pain and sin, heal us with your mercy. When our ears are ringing with self-doubt and cynicism, strengthen us with words of faith and love. When our minds are muddled with confusion and fear, enlighten us with the radiance of your wisdom. Speak to our spirits from the truth of your being, the reality of your love, and the promise of your forgiveness, that we may hear your voice clearly and follow where you call us to go. Hear these words of assurance. The Spirit changes our hearts and our lives, blessing us with the assurance 
that we are God's children. As beloved children of God, rest assured that you are treasured, loved, and forgiven. Our hymn of praise is the contemporary worship song, Here I Am to Worship, or also known as Light of the World. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy God, creator of light and giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace and transform us by your spirit that we may follow after your Son, Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We hear from Scripture.
reading is Genesis 1, verse 1 to 5. When God began to create the heavens and the earth, the earth was without shape or form. It was dark over the deep sea, and God's wind swept over the waters. God said, let there be light, and so light appeared. God saw how good the light was. God separated the light from the darkness. God named the, day, named the light day and the darkness night. Here ends the reading. Inspire our understanding, Spirit of God. Our psalm of the day is Psalm 29. There's a song, sung refrain. Um, Joshua will play through it once, we'll sing it once, and then we will continue with the psalm. Ascribe to the Holy One, all you gods, ascribe glory and power. Give all honor to God's name. Worship the Creator in the beauty of holiness. The Holy One's voice rolls over the oceans. The God of glory thunders. The voice of God is upon the mighty waters. The voice of God is full of power. The voice of the Creator is full of splendor. The Holy One's voice breaks the cedar trees and smashes the cedars of Lebanon. It makes the mountain skip like a calf. The, and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. Lightning flashes at the sound of that voice which shakes the endless wilderness. That voice brings the deer to labor and strips the forest bare. in the temple shout glory. Glory, glory. The Holy One sits enthroned over the flood. The Creator sits enthroned forever. The Holy One gives strength to God's people. And blesses the people forevermore, blessings of peace and well-being. We will sing our, our gospel acclamation, Voice of Creation.
voice of creation, open our ears to hear your word. Source of salvation, open our hearts to hold your love. Soul's inspiration, open our minds to know. Gospel reading is Mark 1, 4 to 11. Glory to you, O Lord. John the Baptist was in the wilderness calling for people to be baptized to show that they were changing their hearts and lives and wanted God to forgive their sins. Everyone in Judea and all the people of Jerusalem went out to the Jordan River and were being baptized by John as they confessed their sins. John wore clothes made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. He announced, one stronger than I is coming after me. I'm not even worthy to bend over and loosen the strap of his sandals. I baptize you with water but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. About that time, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee, and John baptized him in the Jordan River. While he was coming up out of the water, Jesus saw heaven splitting open and the Spirit, like a dove, coming down on him. And there was a voice from heaven, You are my Son, whom I dearly love, In you, I find happiness. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hopefully this doesn't end in losing the microphone. Winter farm chores get done in the dark. I grew up as a farm kid with green coveralls and tall Sorel winter boots, the kind that you get at Peaver Mart that start out white. I remember one particular round of evening chores because it was winter and I was alone. The barn was just north of the house, not that far but with no yard light, it was far enough. Farther north still was just prairie. Sometimes on the right sort of night, we could see the orange glow from Swift Grant. That would have been 45 miles north. So I had finished up whatever needed doing in the barn, probably checking on a ewe that we thought would lamb soon. The next task was shutting off the barn light for the night. I did. And then it was dark. Too dark for teenage me. Too dark to be comfortable. So now I was standing in front of the barn, and I still had to go a few paces through the corral to get to the gate and then up the path to the house. But I froze. I could hear something. On top of the darkness, there was rustling. There was crunching in the snow. There was breathing. Something was breathing. My brain knew it was probably sheep bedded down for the night. But I felt unsettled and vulnerable. I held my breath. It was probably adrenaline and a bit of muscle memory that pushed me through the last steps out of the corral towards the gate. And with my mitts on, trying to find the mechanism to open the corral gate and begin to swing it, this huge gate, towards me. 
And I remember that moment because as it swung on its hinges, suddenly the light from the farmhouse could reach me. Oh, the relief of light in the darkness. I scrambled through, closed the gate behind me, and bolted up the path towards that light. Our text today begins in the dark, with God beginning to create. The earth is without shape or form. It is darker than a prairie farmyard in winter. The message version writes it this way. The earth is a soup of nothingness, a bottomless emptiness, an inky blackness. This is a place of chaos and uncertainty. And then there is movement. There is a rustling in the dark. There is a wind from God brooding and sweeping over the deep. I picture the sort of wind that we get here in Regina in wintertime that picks up the dry snow and sweeps along such that you can see the shape of the wind as it goes. It's shifting and unpredictable. It has a life of its own. And then in the dark, God speaks, let there be light. And so light appeared. Oh, the relief of light in the darkness. God sees that the light is good and separates the light from the darks, naming the light day and the darkness night. This is the first day in our creation story. I imagine the listeners that first heard these stories were drawn into the grandeur of this opening scene. God and God's wind powerfully bringing light into being with just a word. The early listeners to this story envisioned the world very different than I do. I took science in university and I love all these visions of all these pictures of spike proteins on a virus or when NASA sends out new pictures from the Mars rover. That's amazing, I love those photos. But the first listeners had a very different idea of what the Earth and the cosmos might be like. More like a firmament, a ceiling of some kind that's holding back the waters of the sky and a crust of Earth where they live with another deep, dark, chaotic ocean underneath. They're surrounded by chaos on all sides. One author described these early audiences as being aware of the precariousness of existence. And then this story sweeps in and reassures them, God is grand and powerful and in control bringing light into darkness. This is an anchoring story. And thousands of years later, I am drawn into this text for the same reason. I understand darkness and chaos on all sides. Recently, I was reading a novel to our nine-year-old daughter, where in the magical world where this novel is set, The magic is being threatened and the whole world might rip apart. And a character says, these are uncertain and tumultuous times. I paused there, wondering if I needed to explain the vocabulary. But instead, my daughter's eyes got wide and she said, we know what that means, don't we, mom? Yes, we do. Uncertain and tumultuous dark feeling. And even as as we all watch the news this week, watching what's unhappening at the Capitol building and thinking, what is going on? Where is the light in all of this? 
Sometimes we are frozen in the dark, holding our breath like I was that night in the corral, wondering what is it that's coming next? What do I hear? But even on those times, we can hold hope in our hands. Eugene Peterson writes, we believe that God's spirit continues to hover over the chaos of the world's evil and our sin, shaping a new creation and new creatures. God is still in the business of creating light in the darkness, the sort of light that does not overcome, the darkness does not overcome. At Christmas, we celebrate Jesus as the light of the world, and we look for ways for the light to show up. This year, maybe it was in the form of baking that a neighbor brought by, or a Christmas card from someone that you didn't even know still had your address. Maybe it's the fresh way that mornings start with a little seed of renewed courage for the day. Maybe it's a, an appointment with your counselor that you're finally able to schedule in and you're looking forward to some help navigating the darkness. Maybe it's a vaccination that feels like a light at the end of the tunnel. The light we experience is light we can rest in. It is a gift from God. God shows up like the lights of home across a farmyard to bring us relief and hope and joy. Amen. Our uh, hymn of the day is Song Over the Waters. Oh 
that daughters make us people of the water and your name. Make us people of the water and your name. Let us confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried, he descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayers of intercession. The uh, response is, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. At his baptism, your voice, O Lord, announced your beloved son. May all who are baptized in his name proclaim him in word and deed. Unite your church in the waters of new birth by your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. At the beginning of creation, your word, O Lord, brought everything into being. Give to your people reverence for all you have made that bears your image. May we be to one another a blessing. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In baptizing all who came, John displayed the hospitality of your love. Increase within us the same spirit of welcome and openness to repentance. Unlock the chains of past mistakes and reveal the gateway to newness of life for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. At your command, you, at your command, your word, O Lord, brings light into darkness. Shine your radiant beams on all who are in need of your healing grace especially those in hospital, Matthew Digny and Dave Castle. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Your word, O Lord, is our beginning and our end. Into your loving purpose we commend all who have died. May we at the last pass through the waters of death to live with you forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, the Beloved, Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray.
like to thank you for the offerings that you continue to make uh, through e-transfers or pre-authorized remittance or by dropping or mailing your offerings into the church here. I'd like to offer this prayer. Bless these gifts with your voice of creation, your healing and your love, mighty God. Transform our meager offerings into abundant gifts for a world in need of your light and life. Amen. We sing the doxology. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Live in peace, inspired by Christ to love and serve. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 